Every steak starts somewhere, and it's not the grill. It starts here. Steel hooks, overhead rails, and chilled concrete floors echoing with the sounds of moving machinery and hissing steam. Every year, more than 130 million cattle are slaughtered worldwide. In the US alone, over 30 million are processed annually to feed a growing demand for beef, burgers, steaks, brisket, and more. But what really happens inside a slaughterhouse? How does a 1,300-pound steer become a trimmed and packaged ribeye in just a matter of hours? How do modern facilities process thousands of animals per day while maintaining speed, sanitation, and regulatory compliance? Today, we're going beyond the supermarket, past the butcher counter, deep into the factory. This is how beef is processed, inside a modern cattle slaughterhouse. Beef is one of the most consumed meats on the planet. In the US, the average person eats around 58 pounds of beef per year. Multiply that by 330 million people, and the scale becomes staggering. To meet demand, large slaughterhouses operate with military precision. The largest beef processing plants can handle over 5,000 cattle per day, nearly 400 animals per hour. Some facilities process more than 2 million head of cattle every year. Every step is optimized for yield, throughput, and food safety. Animals arrive by truck. They're processed on the same day. Cuts are boxed, palletized, and shipped out within hours. Speed matters, but so does consistency. Because in a system this massive, even one contaminated carcass, one breakdown, or one regulatory failure can have national consequences. So how does it all begin? It starts the moment the cattle roll through the gate. Cattle arrive at the slaughterhouse by truck, often after traveling hundreds of miles from feedlots. Upon arrival, they're guided into holding pens, large covered areas where the animals can rest, hydrate, and recover from transport stress. This isn't just about comfort. Stress affects meat quality. Overly stressed animals can produce dark, firm, dry beef due to changes in muscle chemistry, something the industry works hard to avoid. Most modern plants follow animal welfare guidelines developed by Dr. Temple Grandin, a renowned animal behavior expert. Her designs include curved shoots and solid-sided pens that keep cattle calm and reduce panic. Before processing begins, USDA inspectors and plant personnel visually inspect every animal for signs of illness or injury. Any cattle deemed unfit are removed from the line. From here, Cattle are moved one by one into the processing area, unaware of what comes next. And that's when the line begins. Before any cutting happens, the animal must be rendered unconscious, quickly and humanely. This is done using a captive bolt gun. A steel bolt is fired into the animal's skull, causing immediate loss of consciousness. When done properly, the animal feels no pain and is unaware of the next steps. Stunning is a legal requirement in most countries, including the U.S., under the Humane Methods of Slaughter Act. USDA inspectors monitor this process to ensure compliance. After stunning, the animal is hoisted by one hind leg onto an overhead rail. A worker then severs the carotid artery and jugular vein in a single motion, a process known as exsanguination. The body bleeds out rapidly, and death occurs within moments. The rail moves continuously, with one animal following the next. At peak operation, some lines process more than 300 head of cattle per hour. It's fast, it's methodical, and it sets the tone for everything that follows. After bleeding out, the carcass is transferred to a second rail and moved into the next phase, hide removal. Specialized machines and trained workers work together to peel the hide from the carcass in large sheets. It's a delicate process. Cuts too deep can contaminate the meat with hair, dirt, or bacteria from the outer surface. Once removed, hides are either sold to tanneries for leather production or discarded, depending on quality. Next comes evisceration, the removal of internal organs. The abdominal cavity is opened by hand. Organs like the liver, heart, lungs, and intestines are carefully extracted. Some of these, such as livers and hearts, are cleaned and sold for human consumption. Others are processed into pet food, pharmaceuticals, or disposed of as waste. Throughout this process, USDA inspectors observe every step. Any contamination, 
odd coloration, or abnormalities result in that carcass being flagged for further inspection or rejection. Every second counts, but so does every cut. With the organs removed, the next step is to split the carcass lengthwise into two symmetrical halves. A large circular saw slices through bone and muscle from tail to neck. This exposes the spinal cord and internal structure for further inspection. A vacuum system removes any dust, bone fragments, or residual tissue stirred up by the saw. Each half is then steam vacuumed, a process that uses hot water and suction to remove surface bacteria. In some plants, carcasses are also pasteurized with a hot water rinse or antimicrobial sprays to reduce the risk of pathogens like E. coli or salmonella. USDA inspectors perform a final check for visible contamination, lesions, or defects. They inspect lymph nodes and glands that can indicate disease or poor health. If the carcass passes, it's stamped and cleared for chilling. Only now is the animal officially considered beef. Once approved, the carcass halves are moved into massive refrigeration chambers. These chilling rooms maintain temperatures just above freezing, typically around 34 degrees off. The goal is to rapidly lower the internal temperature of the meat, slowing bacterial growth and preserving freshness. Carcasses hang on steel rails for 24 to 48 hours, depending on facility protocol. During this time, natural enzymes within the muscle begin to break down connective tissue, a process known as aging. This tenderizes the meat and improves flavor. Some plants extend aging for premium cuts, but most commercial beef is processed quickly to maintain throughput. Once chilled, the carcasses are moved to fabrication rooms, colder, cleaner, and filled with butchers and thermal gear. Now comes the real breakdown. Inside the fabrication room, skilled butchers and automated systems break the chilled carcasses down into primal cuts, the large sections from which steaks, roasts, and ground beef will be made. Each side of beef is separated into the four main primals, chuck, rib, loin, and round. Additional cuts like brisket, flank, and shank are also removed and sorted. High-speed band saws, handheld knives, and conveyor belts move in sync. Every piece is trimmed, deboned, and grated for fat content and marbling. Premium cuts like ribeye and tenderloin are vacuum-sealed, labeled, and boxed for retail or restaurant use. Lower value cuts are set aside for further processing or grinding. Speed is critical, but precision determines profit. Every ounce of usable meat matters. All the trimmings, from brisket ends to fatty scraps, are collected, sorted, and sent to the grinding line. Here, meat is blended into ground beef using automated grinders and fat analyzers. The ratio of lean to fat is carefully controlled, 80-20, 90-10, or whatever blend is needed. Some plants even combine lean trimmings from older cows with fattier cuts from younger ones to create the perfect mix. After grinding, the meat is chilled, weighed, and packed into retail chubs, patties, or bulk food service containers. But nothing goes to waste. Bones are sent to rendering facilities to become broth or gelatin. Fat is turned into tallow, used in cooking oils, soap, and biodiesel. Organs, if not sold for human consumption, are exported, processed into pet food, or used in industrial applications. Every part of the animal is monetized. In the beef industry, efficiency isn't just a goal, it's a business model. With such high volumes of meat moving through a single facility, food safety is a constant battle. Slaughterhouses operate under strict USDA oversight. Sanitation crews clean every surface between shifts with high-pressure hoses, antimicrobial foams, and chemical sanitizers. Workers wear gloves, masks, and clean uniforms. Equipment is disinfected hourly. But even with all that, problems can occur. Cross-contamination, equipment failure, human error. A single lapse can result in widespread recalls, Millions of pounds of beef pulled due to pathogens like E. coli 0157H7 or listeria. Labor conditions are also a hot-button issue. Workers face long shifts, sharp tools, cold environments, and intense line speeds. Injuries are common, and turnover is high. Animal welfare remains controversial. 
While stunning methods have improved, critics argue that the scale and pace of industrial slaughter still raise ethical concerns. The modern slaughterhouse is efficient, regulated, and indispensable, but it's also a system built for speed, and not without cost. A steak may look simple on the plate, but its journey is anything but. From live steer to sealed package, beef processing is a carefully choreographed dance of biology, machinery, and logistics. It happens fast, under pressure, and at enormous scale. Every burger, every ribeye, Every tray of ground beef in the grocery aisle came through a place like this. For most people, the slaughterhouse is out of sight, out of mind. But it's the engine behind one of the most consumed proteins on the planet. And whether you're a rancher, a chef, or just a customer in the checkout line, one truth remains. Behind every cut is a system built for yield, speed, and consistency. One that most people never get to see, until now.